Today we're going to learn about 30, 60, 90 special right triangles. 30, 60, 90 triangles are similar to your 45, 45, 90 triangles with one main obvious difference, and that is the formulas or the expressions we use to get the lengths of each side are going to be different. It's not a 45, 45, so we no longer have two sides the same. One side is going to be n, that's going to be the shortest side. So the side opposite the 60 degree, or excuse me, opposite the 30 degree angle will be your n. It doesn't matter how we look at this picture. If we were to rotate this picture so that it was on its side, opposite the 30 will still be the n. Opposite the 60 will be the n root 3. And opposite the right angle, or the hypotenuse, will be your 2n side. This formula or expression for how to do a 30, 60, 90 triangle will always be the same for every right triangle. No matter what kind of right triangle we have, we will always use this for your 30, 60, 90 right triangles. So here we go. It's the 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Take a moment and think, do you know where the pieces go? Well, I know across from the 30 is where I'm going to find the n. Across from the 60 is where I find n root 3. Lastly, across from the 90 is where I find the 2n. We have to use this to figure out the value of n so we can figure out the value of the other two sides. I notice right here that we have one given side and one expression. I can use that to solve for n. I have 2n equals 22. If I divide by 2, I get n equals 11. That's all the more math you have to do. You now can write in the measurements of all the sides. The right hand side, or the other leg, right here is n, so that side is 11. The base side is n root 3, so that makes it 11 root 3. And we're done. We have all the lengths of all the three sides. Here's one where we have the angle opposite, or the side opposite the 30. Well, opposite the 30 is the n side. So this makes it really easy. We already know the value of n. n is 8. So let's put in the values. On this side, it's the 2n side, so that makes this side 16. The base is the n root 3 side, that makes the base n root, got that written pretty well, there we go, n root 3, which is 8 root 3. We have all of our measurements. Here's an example here with a, with a table. What I would suggest you do is pause the recording and see if you can fill in most of this table. Where you may run into a problem is on the ones that you're trying to figure out A and C when given B. The rest of it hopefully should be pretty easy. So again, take a moment, see if you can fill out this table. That way you know if you truly understand this or if you still have questions. Okay, let's fill in the table. For the first one, we know A. A is 3. That makes C 6. A and C have the relationship that the C, or the hypotenuse, is always double the short side, which in this case is the 3. This would be 8. Then, looking at the next one, we know the hypotenuse is 16. That makes the short leg half of that, which is 8. On the next one, we have the hypotenuse is 10, which makes the short leg 5. If you think of it this way, A is n, B is n root 3, and C is 2n. Now we can fill out the middle, middle column. B would be 3 root 3, 4 root 3, 8 root 3, and 5 root 3. Those are pretty easy. When you're given either the short leg or the hypotenuse, it works pretty simple. It gets a little bit more challenging when we're given the medium or the longer of the two legs. So let's see how we can do that. Okay, so if I'm given B, which is 20, that means that N 
root 3 equals 20. Now I have to solve for n, so I'm going to divide by root 3. Now I have n equals 20 over root 3. Rationalizing the denominator or multiplying it by square root of 3 over square root of 3 gets us to our answer. We now have 20 root 3 over 3. And since that is as simplified as it can go, we can write that in. So we have 20 root 3 over 3. Now as we look at our table, the challenge here is we need to double that. We need to take 2 times that. All we're really going to do is double the value of 20. 2 times 20 is 40, and we're done. 40 root 3 over 3. We have one more of these to do. That's the side with the 9 on it. Again, I would suggest pausing the recording and trying this one before, you moving, on, before moving on. Okay, what we need to do is we need to solve n root 3 equal to 9, not square root of 9 though, equal to just regular old 9. Again, to get rid of that square root of 3, we need to divide it. Just like if it said 3n, we would divide by 3. Now we have n equals 9 over the square root of 3. We need to rationalize this, which means we multiply it by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, which gives us 9 root 3 over 3. Hopefully you can see the simplification here of the 9 and 3. 9 divided by 3 gives me 3 root 3, and that is as simple as your answer can be. Going back to our table, we would put in 3 root 3. I'm going to rewrite that. And to get the C or the 2 inside, I multiplied that by 2, which would give me 6 root 3. Lastly, when we have a decimal, we, could, we can just go ahead and create these as a decimal number or leave it as a simplified radical. Half of 3.6 is 1.8. And to get our B, we would have 1.8 root 3, which depending on the way the answer is listed, you may have to multiply out or you maybe can leave it the same way it is. We will be talking about this more in class. Make sure you have good notes written down and bring all of your questions to class and we'll work through them as a group.